Hello guys, welcome to my channel. I have a guest today, his name is Vinya and you probably know him because we've already made an online class about learning English language and the link will be below. And today we're gonna talk about 10 tips to learn English language and to master it, to really speak like a native speaker. Vinya is actually from Russia and you're gonna hear him now and you would not believe it. How long have you wait, been in this? Hold case? up, hold up, wait, can I, can I, can I? Can now you can't believe it. Now, yeah, now he's now from Russia. You can't believe it. <laughs> Okay, so I've I'll... been sorry. Yeah. I've been <laughs> потому что Russian. I've been out here for four years now. I stepped off the plane in 2013. But you stepped up with an amazing American accent. Already, yeah, I was just like. And that. you've never been to the States no, before that. No, first time. First time. Can you imagine that, like, doing that back in your home country, mastering your ex uh, your accent, like Venus? I mean, a lot of hard work. But this He's video is not. You how. He's gonna tell you how. A little bit. It's not about mastering your accent this video specifically. Um, we are gonna talk about it later on. I have a hat hair right now. But um, no, but today I'm gonna talk to you about 10 tips, right? 10 very important tips in learning American English more than anything, American English. So if you're interested, please continue watching this video. Please hold. In the back all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Please hold while we transfer your call. <laughs> Tip number one for all of you guys, especially people from uh, Brazil and all the Asian countries and Russia, open your mouth. You gotta open your mouth real wide because American English is super animated when it comes to your mouth. In your native languages, you can kind of get away with it. In American English, it's not really gonna work because some sounds are super specific. And for example, two words, man and men, right? One man, multiple men. Huge difference. It's all about how you open your mouth. Always had with tax reform, uh, is it a populist message that people believe? Right. So you gotta be careful with that. Don't be afraid to open your mouth. <laughs> I think um, Asian people have a problem with that, right? Um, Russian too. Russian too? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so because America, I feel that America is about exaggerating things <laughs> like when you American go American English, yeah. Um, and American culture as well. When you go to Costco, like where do you buy six packs of milk? <laughs> six packs of milk. <laughs> so it's about exaggerating. Uh. It's about um, doing everything in a big way. So yeah, opening kinda, your mouth like... <laughs> everything is big. Yeah. Like all your reactions and yeah. just everything is big and you have to showcase it through the language basically totally yeah so yeah open your mouth which brings me to tip number two you have to you absolutely have to learn phonetics and i know you don't want to do that but it's just something you really really have to do as a foreign um person person who speaks a foreign language you really have to do that because american english is not a phonetic language which means you don't really you don't read it the way it's written that's basically what it is <laughs> Production manager. It was Vena or Marina. Do you remember that alphabet? Like English has two alphabets. The first is the alphabet, the second is the sound alphabet. Yeah. With all of the different so, signs. It's something you really, really have to do as a person speaking a foreign language and learning English as a second language because American English is not a phonetic language, so things are not what they appear to be, basically. You don't pronounce things the way they're written. And you really, really have to learn the sound phonetic alphabet before you can actually talk, if that makes any sense. Yeah, and forget about your language, because I know, like, for example, again, in Italian, um, if you say hotel, you would say hotel, so you don't pronounce the first H. Mm -hmm. um, so forget about that. I know, because the alphabet is, is the same, and some people mm -hmm. are confused about, like, reading English words. Please forget about it and um, learn English phonetics. Really, yeah. really important. Like, from scratch, kind of. Yeah. So when you learn your phonetics in English, you kind of have to forget that you speak any other language. Yeah because all your sounds from your native language are going to influence the, the English sounds and then it's going, to, it's going to be a mess and it's not really going to work. So yeah, learn your phonetics, but don't connect it to your native language, please. Tip number three, especially in American English, relax. Don't be stiff. Just, you know, sit, sit, sit back and just Imagine enjoy yourself. Imagine you're an American yeah. on the couch. Just enjoy yourself. <laughs> a big part of 
opening your mouth, the first tip is just being relaxed and not really giving a Am I allowed to? <gasps> no! Oh, sorry. They're gonna switch no. off the monetization. <laughs> yeah. You, you, can, you, can, you can, like, you can do I something. Know, I'm gonna do You can, yeah. You can censor it. He's an English teacher. Yeah. <laughs> so you kind of have to master the art of not really giving a damn when you speak American English. So you really have to relax and just take a deep breath and just do it. And there is also scientific explanation to that. Um, our brain can function in two modes, focus mode and diffuse mode. And in diffuse mode, uh, it's easier for the brain to pick up the knowledge you have somewhere there in the back. Because when you're too focused and you try like, to remember this and that and that word, your speech is kind of artificial. And this happens to me in like German, because I only speak German right now when I'm flying Lufthansa, which is like, the worst thing to use in German, I just use it on the airplane. But when I'm relaxed and I'm like ordering my, um, I don't know, Fizzaft, which is orange juice, oh, apple juice. Uh, so yeah, when I'm relaxed, it's so much easier. But when I'm talking about business in German, I try to focus and remember the words and it's, you don't want to hear me speaking German. <laughs> yeah, and then it's all choppy and yeah. you just take pauses and you just, you like start sweating and shaking yeah, yeah. and you can't really think of words. And it, it works for, all the languages pretty much, but especially for American English, because it is, the nature of the language is just so lazy and kind of relaxed and laid back. Yeah, and Americans so, are like that. Like yeah, that. You, have to, you have to be lazy. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. Relax. Tip number four. Please try not to talk like a robot. What that means, your speech is kind of one tone. When you really talk like that and you don't really change and there's no tones or inflections or anything, any kind of melody to it. Los Angeles is amazing. Mon is the capital of Great Britain. <laughs> and when it's choppy, when it's like insanely choppy like that, so you say one word at a time and it's very straight tone like that, try avoid that. And the best way to tell if you are a robot or not, you just record yourself talking and listen back and compare yourself to native speakers that too that too because Americans oh my god they exaggerate everything like oh my god there's a 20% discount I don't do that I do <laughs> so exaggerate and um, yeah I think this is the culture right and when you know a person for like two weeks and he's your best friend and then you're so excited about 10% they're just open very very open as far as like emotions and open-minded as well. Yeah. And that's something you have to think about when you speak the language as well. Cause yeah. Cause it shows. It reflects, yeah. Mm -hmm. Number five, you have to learn all your phrasal verbs and idioms 100% because that's kind of like 80% of the, the speech. <laughs> daily conversations yeah. in America. Phrasal verbs and idioms for sure. And the language changes all the time. And with years, it gets more and more casual kind of everywhere so you just you kind of have to basically you know speak the language of the people and really really get down and dirty with those phrasal verbs yeah i remember the list when our teacher in russia gave us the list to study like and learn idioms like oh my god do i have to learn them like by heart you do. yes you, you do. do oh but then once you learn your first like 30 or 40 then you kind of get this instinct or this I don't know how to explain it, but you kind of have this almost like an animal instinct and you know exactly why it, it's this way. And then you can build your own and make your own kind of, it's weird. It's a weird concept, but just learn them and then you'll, you'll, you'll feel it too. I yeah. promise you. English is the stupidest language in the world <laughs> and you can't really understand it. You have to feel it. It's like intuition. Yeah. yeah. Really instinct. That's like yeah. the best word for this instinct. So really open your mind learn them and then I promise you won't you won't have to learn anymore because then you're gonna get the concept sort I think of. it's the same with the verbs in the past somehow you start uh, realizing that you know exactly whether you use ed or there's some regular yeah form. yeah regular regular words yeah even words. even with your regular verbs right um sometimes get got, you just gotten know. yeah right you just sometimes you just know the word we were talking about today was rewind right and present and I was like what's the past for rewind rewound and then I looked it up yeah that was right so you kind of get this yeah feeling I feeling yeah you kind of feel it and then you just you don't have to use the books anymore that's so cool right yeah incredible number six. <laughs> <laughs> you absolutely have to watch all the American TV shows and films, especially TV shows. So you were in an I Hate Rachel club? Yes, he was. 
Don't know. So who else was in this club? Uh, actually, the, there was also that exchange student from Thailand, but I, I don't think he, he knew what it was. Casual, everyday life of an average, or maybe not average, American, and you really understand the people, and you pick up some language also, and you get to listen, and it's just great, overall great, and then you do something you like if you really enjoy the show. It's also for pleasure. So why oh, not? Oh yeah, when you get hooked up with a TV show, oh my god, this is the best you can do for your language. Because when I got hooked up with the uh, House MD, can I, I started can I watching it in can English. I can I stop? Is <laughs> it hooked up? And that means to have sex with somebody. Oh my god. Yeah, Hook, hooked on. <laughs> you were like, when I got hooked up with, and I was like... Get hooked on the TV show, and it's the best you can do for your language. Mm -hmm. Because um, when I got hooked on a <laughs> TV show, I started learning all of the medical vocabulary and I know just all of the words by heart right now. Yeah, because you're so into it. And yeah. Then you kind of just pick it and up. And you cannot miss it. And you're like, oh my God, I want to see more. And then when you're so into the story and there's a word that you don't know, you really want to research it because you really want to know what's going on. And so. then you hear it hundreds of times and then you just memorize it. Yep. Perfect. YouTube, I mean, YouTube is good. It's definitely good for like everyday life, but also TV shows. With subtitles in English? Because also you have something in common because everybody watches TV shows, yep. American TV shows. Those are like everywhere. Number seven, you have to keep a notebook of words, phrases, slang, idioms, anything you can learn or get your hands on because first of all, your muscle memory, if you write it, you kind of memorize it better. And no matter what kind of learner you are, if you're a visual learner or whatever, it just works for everybody. So muscle memory is very important. So keep a notebook, like an actual notebook, not an iPhone note or whatever. It's gonna help you a lot. And then you can go back and review and you just see it with your own eyes and remember how you were writing it. It's just really good for you. Use all kinds of memories that we have, visual, like listening to things, writing things down, and then um, saying them, yeah. using them in your speech. Yeah, put them in your original thoughts. That's the most important thing with learning new English. words. Yeah. You really have to create your own language with the word. And that's how you're gonna remember it forever. Number eight, I know not everyone can, but you have to try and do what you can to travel and even study abroad. This is just the most amazing experience for you. And then you really, you get to see how the language is being utilized every day. And you just get inspired and motivated and you're like, oh, I'm gonna go order a coffee or something, you know? And I'm gonna use, you know, this question type, indirect question, for example, right? Or something. So you really get to see with your own eyes what it's like to live in the language, not speak the language or learn the language, but live the language, right? And you really get to get a taste of, you know, the culture and what people do and stuff like that. So it's really, it's just really incredible. And the first time I went somewhere to learn English, I was so inspired. When was I it? I was Czech Republic. It was oh. um, Czech Republic. Um, it was my second year learning English and it was bad. <laughs> it was bad. So I went there and I told all my friends, I was like, okay, listen. So they were all from Russia. I was like, listen, while we're here this entire week, we're only gonna speak English to each other because we can speak Russian back home, right? That's boring, we can do that back home, but here, let's just, let's just really try and get the best you know, out of this time that we have. So let's just speak English together. And it was such an amazing time, such an amazing time. Stress, oh my God, yes. You so get, when you're stressed, you're like, you're pushing everything out of your memory. You're just forced to use yeah. the language. Oh yeah, that's, every day. That's pretty good too. I mean, it doesn't really work for some people. For some people it works beautifully, but for, you know, the but rest of us. Breaking the language barrier. Yeah, you just, it depends on what kind of person you are as well. But, you know, putting yourself in a stressful situation could work as well. And Benia is actually an English language teacher at Columbia West College here in LA. And um, if you want to come here, the link will be below and Benia can be your teacher. I can be your teacher. Isn't that amazing? No problem. No problem. YouTuber is a teacher. Yeah, people actually kind of freak out. <laughs> when you bit. say how many followers you have? I don't say, they just, they just know. They just know. Number nine, and probably one of the most important ones, you have to learn how to think in the language you're trying to speak in. So important because that's how we get confused. When you, when you, when you think in Russian and you try to speak English, that comes out kind of 
I'm sorry. That comes out kind of bad, right? It's kind of choppy and not very nice because the grammar is different, the structures are different, the words are different, obviously. So you kind of have to learn how to you know, put your Legos together, sort of, in the way that you want them to come out, right? If you're building a castle with a, you know, if you have two boxes of Legos, a castle and a car, and you're trying to build a castle with your car Legos, that's not gonna come out right. So you really have to make sure you, you can differentiate and just really hit the switch and just, okay, now I'm gonna think in English because I'm about to speak English. So you really have to learn how to do that and practice, catch yourself until it becomes a habit and then nobody will be able to stop you, I promise. Yeah, so start with talking to yourself in English. Um, and also another thing, like why do teachers advise to use English English dictionaries? Because you have to memorize words as they are in English. Like you have to have this concept of the word, like here's, I don't know, a person. Yeah, you <laughs> human to, being. You need to know it. Do not definition. translate it from yeah. your language. Just realize that this is a human being and this is the word you use to define moving, um, living. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know the definition because there are some of the words, so, some, there are some words that I know in English but I don't know in Russian, even though I was born there and, you know, grew up there. But some things I learned in English and then I don't really know how to talk about them in Russian. So you really have to be able to separate the two and that's how you're going to make the most progress for sure. And this is the trick you have to learn. Yeah, you just really have to perfect. practice and yeah. catch yourself. And number 10, the most important one. The one that breaks some people actually. Don't be afraid to make mistakes because the truth is nobody will judge you. That's just how it is. Nobody will judge you, nobody cares. And they don't care. They don't care, they, they just, they're trying to understand what you're trying to say. So yeah. they, they don't really like analyze, oh my God, he made that mistake. Maybe some people do, but nobody's but, gonna but judge don't you. Say who got, don't say who got. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. like those things pay attention to. <laughs> if it's like, super, yeah, if it's something like that, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like normally, like, do not concentrate on whether you sound like a native speaker, do not concentrate on your grammar. Um, concentrate on just enjoying your time, enjoying your conversation. Yeah. And being in the moment. And by the way, guys, uh, Vani is also a writer. Author. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So he has written a book. Um, on English tenses and this is the book that comprises like hundreds of books on English grammar and I think this is the only book that you need on your desk when you're studying English just one just one honestly and it's like a super short book. I had 10 different books 10 different people to go to 500 different websites to go on and that was a lot and it was a lot of little pieces of information that I had to put together for me in order to learn English so what I did, you know, I just I just made that one little book that has everything you need to know about English. You're welcome. <laughs> the link will be below. I think you totally need it, guys. Um, and if you enjoyed this class, uh, please like this video, subscribe to my channel because um, Vania lives one hour right from me uh, on, on the airplane. He's, mm -hmm. He lives in LA, I'm from San Francisco. So yeah, we're gonna have a lot more online classes with him. Yeah. And yeah. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, um, let us know if you have any questions or if you want a class on English pronunciation because I want one. Yeah, I teach um, that. Yeah, uh, let us know that. in the comments below. Thank you so much and we'll see you in the next vlog. Don't forget to hit the bell. Yeah. Okay. See you later. <laughs> see ya, bye bye.